You're listening to Atlanta Baseball Talk, your weekly podcast for all things Atlanta Braves. Welcome to show number 295. Today is Sunday, April 26, 2015, and my name is Steve. I'm joined by both Hamilton and Curtis. And guys, tonight's show is sponsored by Front Row Seats, our first ever sponsor. So please, if you're looking for tickets, use them. You can get the best price online, guaranteed. Use discount code ABT at the Front Row Seats checkout page, and you won't pay any service fees. Visit FrontRowSeatsLLC.com or download the mobile app today. That's FrontRowSeatsLLC.com. All right, guys, in tonight's show, we'll discuss the trouble with Jim Johnson, the Bethancourt Pruszynski platoon, and how long a leash to give Cahill. But first, guys, after a great first two weeks, the wheels have kind of come off a bit as the Braves went 1-5 and five this week and didn't look too good doing it. So, guys, let's break it down sort of by the big pieces, and I'll start with the offense. You know, so those first two weeks, the Braves averaged four and a half runs and 8.1 hits per game. This week, they came back to earth, averaged two and a half runs per game, and uh, plus seven hits per game, and this week saw their first shutout of the season, as well as a game with only two hits. You know, we hit much lower average with men in scoring position. And I think it's even a little worse than that, because by the eye test, you're starting to see the holes in the lineup. I mean, center field, whether you're talking EY or Mabin, is a black hole. Those guys are both hitting under 200. Um, you know, second base, kiospo has been nice, but Peterson is not hitting. Catcher, and we're going to talk about that a little bit, Brzezinski's gone berserk, but Bethancourt is not hitting. There's some real holes in the lineup. Um, you know, and after they, well, it started to look bad. You remember the, the last two games against the Marlins in Atlanta, Cahill's first start where I think we just had two hits and then that day game where we got thumped and then we went ahead and like you know blue doors in Toronto and really should have swept that series but it looks like the big concern that all the national writers and all of us had about the offense is kind of coming home to roost don't you think yeah absolutely I mean all the the doubts or the ifs that we had with new players or underperforming players that we were hoping would maybe overperform um, is not happening. Um, you know, Przinsky maybe being the exception there. And uh, I think this is a little, you know, this is more of the Braves who I think we, who they are than what happened the first two seasons. Yeah, ultimately. I mean, it's you know, it's weird. Freddie is struggling pretty mightily. The offense will look a little bit better there. But Przinsky's like the best offensive player on the team. And when you're 38 year old backup catchers, the best journeyman offensive, catcher, yeah. Um, it's a bit of a problem because he's not going to sustain it. Uh, Marcakis has been really nice. Gomes has actually been quite good. Uh, Andrelton has looked pretty good. But, you know, and Kai Ospo and Chris Johnson, actually, not too bad. But, you know, the bench is not doing that much. Well, Kelly Johnson's had some big hits, but his average is not so good. Uh, Gosselin has been uh, pretty invisible. Like I said, center field and part of second base, it's, you know, it's a little rough. Yeah. Kurt, what do you see with the starting pitching and the defense? Well, I mean, the pitching, the starting pitching, I know that they've started to lose more games, but there's a lot of these games where the starting pitching has not been that bad. Um, the big problem that is popping up with the starting pitching is, and it, it's all kind of a, a domino effect, if you will. There's so many, this team is not good enough to have like multiple breakdowns. They can't survive these types of things. And so the, the pitchers, the starting pitchers just aren't going long enough in these games. Um, Cahill, four innings. Stoltz went six innings, which was nice. Um, Tehran, four innings. Wood, five innings. Uh, you know, I mean, it's like that almost, it seems like at every single game. And then you tax your bullpen, which isn't very good. Um, these guys don't strike out a lot of guys, so a lot of guys are putting the ball in play. And when your defense is awful behind you, um, you know, it's going to lead to bad results, which is what we saw so much of this week. I don't think they're as bad as they were this week, um, but 
you know, you come into this week with one error, you leave with 10 errors, and three of these games that you lost this week almost were directly attributable to the fact that they couldn't field the ball, whether it be Goslin booting that incredibly easy double play in New York. Yeah. Uh, Freeman had some awful, awful. He is, he's it's had a terrible series. week. Yeah, yeah. He's just been yeah. in a strange place. So two games uh, that they lost, obviously, to the Phillies. One, they had four errors, including the game winner, loser, whatever you want to call it, which was Freeman. And then again today, he has another huge error. Which is a tough play, um, but you know one that you get end up getting a huge run because you lose five to four. So yeah. right, exactly. um, and and frankly, not that tough a play. I mean, the pitcher was there. You just lead him a little. I mean, yeah. Freddie's got to make that play. Yeah, and he's a lefty. So I mean, the the pitcher was a lefty, obviously. So it's a little. I mean, you kind of got to lead him a little more. And he threw it behind him, which if it's a righty, it's probably an easier play than it is for a lefty to have to reach all the way back across. But you know, Wood had a nice start. Um, Tehran, lots of walks is another thing that's popping up, which you know that's a killer too because you put too many guys on base and. Again, and drive like, up your pitch count. Yeah, absolutely. And and yep. the a couple of these games, uh, Tehran had five walks, including three of the first four. So he ends up giving three up, three runs in the first inning. And the way this offense is operating, that might be twelve, might as well be twelve runs. So yeah, it's just tough. And and this week, you know, we got we got two Cahill starts, um, and he wasn't terrible. He wasn't great. I mean, um, but that pitch, that pitch to Ryan Howard today. Uh, yeah, I mean, Ooh. you got just yeah. awful. I mean, you got just, you got Ryan O and two, and then you give up a three. You run leave up. that fat pitch up right over the heart of the plate, just awful. Yeah. I mean, Cahill settled down a little bit, but he's just looked bad. Yeah, and I don't think you. I mean, and Stoltz had a nice start. Uh, yeah, Stoltz did have a nice start. So uh, it's, and Miller. Yeah, well, yeah, and I mean, it, it's just that. It's it's a it's a it's not just all one area. They they've just fell apart in lots of areas this week. And the starting pitching was good. It just was not good enough to overcome what the rest of this team provides. And hard to overcome when the first three guys don't all dominate. I mean, Tehran's start in New York was just insane. I mean, that first inning, and you know, it was amazing that he got that he went as long as he did. But you know, Tehran. Wood and Shelby have got to be dominant if we're going to, you know, have decent weeks. Well, and Wood was dominant and lost. Well, right. I mean, the to give us lost. any chance lose. to have yeah. a good yeah. week. Yeah, but he's got to go more than five and two-thirds. Well, they all do. So yeah. speaking of, Hammy, what what do you see in the uh, in the bullpen? Uh, I mean, this was a bad week for the bullpen. I would, if I was grading it, I would give it a D minus this week, and I feel like that's being generous. Um, you know, if it weren't for some bad luck in a couple of spots, like we talked about with the defense, but um, it was a lot more bad bullpen pitching this week than than it was bad luck. You start with, you know, Tuesday night, Conniff, Merriman, both look bad. Wednesday night, Johnson loses the game, and, and this was after looking horrid the week before, right? Yeah, just yeah. not striking anybody out, not fooling anyone, keeping the ball up, just doing all the things that he shouldn't be doing if he's not if he's going to be effective. Um, you do have to give a shout out to Buddy Carlisle for the win on Wednesday night, though. I um, know, good old Buddy. It's amazing. It's he's still pitching. Sweet, sweet justice for him. I'm sure <laughs> uh, beating the Braves, uh, and then. Um, you know, Thursday night, it's not his fault, but Avalon could have kept us in the game. He didn't, and ultimately it didn't matter. But, you know, he blew up. Uh, you know, Friday was Johnson again, unlucky. Um, you know, I think they actually looked good on yeah, Friday. Yeah, Johnson They're, was actually okay Friday. And Friday yeah, and the whole, all the bullpen yeah. was. I mean, yeah. Cody Martin had a nice, you know, at-bat there. Um, you know, Saturday they finally got a positive outcome, but even Johnson looked bad in that, right, giving up two hits. Um, and then today we talked about it. It wasn't his fault, but uh, Thomas giving up the run unearned, but um, that ultimately kept us in time in the game of the ninth, Curtis, like you said. So um, I say a large part of us going one and five this week is on the bullpen. So, Ham, I mean, just overall, the looking at the team front to back, what do you think the biggest concern is? Um, I think it's I think it's the bullpen. I think. Um, you know, we talked about we don't have pitchers that are that are going to take us eight innings a lot, like Harangue, another ex-brave. Um, 
So we're going to need a, a good bullpen um, that's going to be able to keep us in it. And uh, I don't think we have a good bullpen, and I think that we have are, are relying on it way too much. So that's our problem. Yeah, I mean, I, I I pretty much agree with you coming from a different angle, which is the starting pitching is my biggest concern. The innings, like we talked about, Tehran hasn't gone longer than six and has had two shabby outings out of four. Wood hasn't gone longer than six and two thirds. Shelby not longer than six. Stoltz and Cahill not eating innings, and they're not very good. They're taxing the bullpen. I mean, Hammy, I think the bullpen's actually pretty talented. You know, they sent uh, Cuniff down, but only because he had pitched whatever three days in a row. They brought the new guys up. We haven't really seen them, but Johnson's a question mark. But you know, Cody Martin's good, and and Cuniff's good, and obviously Grilly's good. Um, and Avalon's been pretty good. If if we if we weren't using them for four innings a game, three innings a game, I think they would look a lot different. I think we got to straighten out the starting yeah. pitching, and and the things would stabilize a great deal. So they had a bad week though, and I just worry yeah. about them long term. I mean, it's you're, it, I mean, it's just as much as what you said that I don't think they're built to take on a lot of innings. Jim Johnson cannot lead the league in innings this year, yeah, right? He we cannot. Not. Yeah, we can't do what we did to Flaherty and uh, Kimbrell all those years ago. Uh, Venters, yeah. Venters. Um, all right, Curtis, what about you? What, what do you think is the biggest concern here? Well, I guess I'm going to be the contrarian and go with the def- I mean, the offense. Um, I just – I think that we have – like you talked about, there, there's so many – so many holes in this lineup. And I think Freddie, it's the lots of platoon guys. And I, I think that hurts with consistency. It's like the old adage that if you have two quarterbacks, you have no quarterbacks. So I think that they need to stick. I mean, if you look at the, if you look at who's batting well on this team, you could almost make out a full lineup at the top. I mean, you've got Brzezinski, Marcakis, Johnson, uh, Chris Johnson, Andrews and Simmons, Kayaspo, Gomes, and Freeman. I mean, that's pretty much your – you could go with those guys, and those are all the guys. I mean, granted, Freeman now is batting two thirty five, but, you know, he's the most talented hitter on the team. So I think that if you threw that – and, I'm again, you're going to rely on guys that aren't maybe everyday players at this time or ever were like Gomes and, and Brzezinski, but throw them out there for a little while just to give them uh, some stability and maybe kind of right the ship a little – um, and hope that you can win some games. Um, I, and I know that in the long term, you want Betancourt and you want uh, Jace Peterson and these types of guys getting more at bats. But I, I think it will help if you if you kind of get back in the win column. That it'll relax some guys and and uh, get us some better outcomes in these games. Yeah, I just worry about starting Gomes against right-handed pitchers playing Przinsky that much over the course of a week. As do I. Yeah, for yeah, both it, of them. Both sure. Of them. Yeah. I, I mean, and, uh, you know, I, 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 I'm not, I'm not, uh, we're in a situation with this team where there aren't, in some of these areas, they're not, they're, there are no answers. They're not even good answers. There are zero answers. Um, so I, I, I'm not suggesting that, that Przinsky should finish the year playing 150 games. Um, but I think that, you know, for uh, for the time being, as bad as it was this week, this team needs to settle down a little, and uh, I think that that would help. I think what we will see is more of the Marcakis in the one, Andrelton in the two, Freddie in the three, someone in the four. You know, I think that Freddie's going to bring some stability to it in that regard. Um, Hammy, what would you do? Uh, I think, you know, my answer is probably a lot like yours, Stevie. I think you just got to stop using the bullpen so much um, and just try to get, you know, try to get more innings out of your starters. Um, but, I mean, that it, I, I think as goes the bullpen and their ability to stay fresh and be effective, um, so go the Braves this season. Yeah, I mean, so the levers to pull on the starting rotation are Cahill and Stoltz, right? You're not touching Tehran, Wooden, Miller. Yeah, So, although you need them to go. Well, they got to go sure. six and two-thirds uh, plus, I, right? Yeah, no, I, I agree. I mean, seven innings out of those guys would be great. You know, Fulte and Whistler are having some nice starts. Uh, you know, Fulte went eight innings last, his last start, but went five 
this start, you know, Whistler's ERA is not, you know, he's not dominating, right? I mean, the problem with like bringing Fulte and Whistler up is you run the risk of just more five inning outings and you're just taxing the bullpen more, you know, as, as, as much. An old bullpen, an an, an elder bullpen. Yeah. Right. Yeah, indeed. And I think, you know, maybe using Grilly, Greeley a little bit more, maybe. I think it's really just Grilly. Yeah. Okay. I like to say French. Yeah. Yeah. Greeley. I love that in the, in the uh, clubhouse too. (laughs) Yes, exactly. Um, (laughs) But, uh, you know, I think that uh, he's not our Kimbrel, you know, so I think that I think you could use him more in a couple of those situations if Johnson has pitched a bunch of days in a row yeah. and hold situations. All right, guys, next up is for or against. But first, a quick word from Front Row Seats. Get the best deals on Braves tickets online. Visit FrontRowSeatsLLC.com and use discount code ABT and you won't be charged any service fees. Again, FrontRowSeatsLLC.com. All right, guys, let's play for or against. And Hammy, we'll start with you. For or against, the Braves are a 500 team in 2015. So, you know, right now we could not be more of a 500 team. We're uh, three and three at home, six and six on the road, 69 runs scored, 68 allowed. I mean, plus one. So we are it. I I think that we are, you know, as long as we don't face ex Braves pitchers, um, and uh, as our bullpen doesn't continue to sort of blow up in situations, I think we could be a 500 team. I think that, you know, maybe I'm being optimistic. I think that the offense. I'm hoping that Freddie can get into a place where he he likes what he sees and Curtis it resembles something that you were talking about. Um, you know, some of those other guys, Beth and Court, I know we'll talk about start hitting a little bit more and contributing. Um, I think we can be a 500 team. I think we we could even be maybe slightly above. All right, Curtis? No. <laughs> <laughs> You I, I, yeah, well, I mean, I, I said you think none of the things I hope for are going to yes. be true. Well, ever. Uh, I saw, I said 77 wins, I think. And I, I still, I, I don't think they're as bad as they have shown. Uh, I don't think they were as good as a six and one team to start the season, but I don't think that they are as bad as they've shown. Um, and I know if that were the case, then that would fall right around 500, but I, I just don't think they're going to be good enough. I think that they're going to have a tax bullpen and they're going to, they're going to have some guys that are going to start to break down in, you know, the, the offense. I'm, I'm extremely worried about what kind of production they get out of that. So I, I just don't see that they can end up on the North side of 500. Yeah, and that's my concern too, especially as we get close to the trade deadline and, you know, they're not particularly in it, then they're going to start selling off some pieces, right? You know, Przinsky, Gomes, Grilly, Johnson, if all those guys continue um, continue performing, then they're going to, I would think, all be on the market potentially. So I, I just can't see, I just can't see um, over 500. All right, Curtis, for or against, Jim Johnson can be trusted. I do not currently trust him, as Ham pointed out. Uh, lots of just bad stuff out of him. And um, you wonder if how quickly you kind of mentally uh, it starts to take an impact on you after such a terrible season he had last year. Um, so, no, I, I don't, I don't, I'm against jim johnson right now yeah and that's the thing i mean johnson fell off a cliff last year had a 7.09 era and he's showing us why more times than not now this year so i think it's it's not going to get better for jim johnson hammy what about you I, I'm not that that uh, much against him. I mean, up until that Toronto game, he looked great, right? He oh, got he a, yeah. a win and a save. He was striking people out. He was keeping the ball down. Um, and then, you know, he faced Toronto, a team that knows him um, and blew up, right? And then blew up in New York, and we talked about um, the Phillies. Um, so, I, I, but I think there are stretches where we can trust him if he's not overused. I think he still has the ability to keep the ball down. I think there's going to be a lot of people who are seeing him for the first time in the National League. So I think that's in his favor. Um, I think there are going to be stretches where we can trust him. Um, but I think he will continue to have those games where he just blows up and can't find it and just gets dinged and can't get anybody out. Um, but not t- all the time. All right, Ham, for or against sitting Bethancourt so much in favor of AJ? 
Um, I'm for it. You know, I mean, I think Bethancourt will get his chances. By the end of the season, he will have had plenty of ABs. Um, I don't think Przinsky can keep this up, but I think while he's doing it, we should ride it. Curtis? Totally agree. Yeah, so I get that Przinsky's the best hitter on the team. I mean, his slash line's kind of ridiculous. 382, 432, 706. But it's not sustainable... He's 38 years old. Bethancourt is part of the future of the team. I get maybe four and th- you know four starts for Bethancourt, three for Przinsky, Pr- or five and two, but it's it's been too much. I I want to see more of Bethancourt out there, and let's figure out what we have with him. All right, Curtis, last one for or against giving Cahill four more starts. Um, I, you know, you want to kind of feel like maybe there's a slight turn of a corner. Um, but I, I just, I he don't looks, see, you know, he, he, he had not the start today, but his prior start, like he looked good for the first four innings. He was keeping the ball down. He was doing some good things. And then it kind of got away from him. Yeah. And I mean, even still, he's, he's hasn't given up a bunch of hits. It's just kind of timely like the horrible home run to Ryan Howard today and then he was the victim of that terrible Goslin error um in New York so I, I mean I I don't I don't trust him to really provide us too much um and as we talked about Steve last week that we're we're on the hook for all this money um is right, kind which of, is such a huge part of the equation I mean don't, yeah you know um but no I'm against him getting a ton of starts all right Hammy yeah, I totally agree. Give somebody else a chance. Yeah, I mean, in a vacuum, I would say give him two more starts. By that point, I think we can figure out if he has figured it out or not. But again, it depends so much on how the guys in AAA are progressing. If if Cahill doesn't improve and you're confident in Fulte or Whistler or Bonuelos, um, you know, um, uh, Ch- Chen Ming Wang is not really looking too good so far. Then get rid of him and eat the money. I mean, just admit it was a bad idea and let's get one of the kids up. But if the kids are still figuring it out down there, uh, you know, I guess you, you at least give him four more. All right, folks, our last word of the night from Front Row Seats. Don't forget to get the best deals on Braves tickets online. Visit FrontRowSeatsLLC.com, use discount code ABT, and you won't be charged any service fees. Again, that's FrontRowSeatsLLC.com. All right, guys, let's move on to Shot in the Dark, our crazy prediction for the coming week. And let's start with our listener pick on Shot uh, Shot in the Dark from last week, and it was from Vince Esposito on Twitter. He predicted that Mabin would hit two home runs, have three stolen bases, and that Andrelton Simmons would go three for three in at least one game. So Mabin actually did have a home run in the first game of the week, which was pretty cool, but that was it. Nothing more from (laughs) Mabin, and then Simmons did not have a three and three game. All right, guys, before we get to this week's picks, let's check in on last week. So, Kurt, it was just you and I. Kurt, you predicted Marcakis would hit 320 and have three doubles. He went 272 with one double. Although, you know, heading into today before his 0 for 4, he was at like 333. Um, My prediction was that in the Mets series, Cahill and Stoltz would combine to give up three earned runs or less and that the Braves would win both games. They actually combined to give up four earned runs. Three were uh, charged to Cahill. But, of course, they lost both. So the win goes to Curtis. Curtis, you are 2-0. Um, yeah, in April. All right, so this week, Kurt, what do you got? Uh, Shelby Miller, um, seven, inning pi- seven innings pitched, two earned runs. Okay, that will be against the Nats, I believe. Oh, no, actually, it won't be against the Nats. That'll be against uh, the Reds. All right, Hammy, what do you got? Uh, I have a Simmons will homer again this week and have two doubles. Okay, and I'm going to go that we sweep the Nats here at home. All right, so uh, folks, please provide you know send in your shots in the dark over Twitter uh, at our Facebook page. Use hashtag ABTSITD and uh, get them in before first pitch on Monday. We'll pick one and we'll tweet it out. 
All right, guys, let's look at the week ahead. It's the start of a 10-game homestand. Seven games this week, three with the Nationals, four with the Reds. And here are the matchups. So Stoltz, Fister, and his 2.37 ERA. Tehran, Scherzer, and his 1.26 ERA. And then Wood, Zimmerman, in the finale. Zimmerman has a 5.23 ERA, but if you throw out a seven-run outing that he had, he certainly pitched much better. And the Nationals come in, you know, limping in. A five-game losing streak for the Nationals. The Nationals are tied for last place with the Phillies in the National League East. It's been a very strange start for them. It's a typical start. They always yeah, start with really, a slope. Yeah, really, it's true. Um, but with the pitching, I just thought that it just wouldn't, you know, wouldn't be. Like well, this. I mean, you, yeah, but their pitching's there. I mean, you list, you missed, uh, mentioned Fister and Scherzer. They both look great, as well as Zimmerman does. They're just not hitting, yeah. and their bullpen's letting them down. And Strasburg's been, been, and Strasburg's been, been, been knocked around <laughs> a couple, of, a couple of starts this year too. Yeah, which is just delicious, by the way. Mm-hmm. All right, on to the Red Series. So Miller, Homer, Bailey who's only had two starts, he's returning from an injury, has a 5.56 ERA. Cahill Descalafani and his 1.04 ERA. I'm sure that's how you pronounce his name. (laughs) Regardless, that's the greatest name ever. (laughs) Uh, Stoltz faces our old buddy Jason Marquis and his over 7 ERA. And then the last game is Tehran Cueto and his 1.86 ERA. We're facing some good pitchers this week. But the Reds as well, not doing great. Yeah, yeah, Just have it worse than us. Jason Marquis. It's amazing, right? That Marquis is still earning a paycheck and probably a decent one. And he's going to, you paycheck. know, we're losing that game. You know. <laughs> seven, seven, that should be my shot in the dark. My bonus shot in the dark is that Marquis goes seven plus and wins. <laughs> he and Bruce Chin. I mean, I'm always amazed when their names pop up and I'm like, oh my God, that guy's still in the league. Five years from now, Marquis is still going to be pitching. Yeah. All right, Curtis, what do you think this week? What do the Braves do? I'm not super excited. Um, what did, did you say? Seven games? Seven games. Four and three. Uh, one and two, two and three and one. Is that right? <laughs> God, math. What I did was you told go that, four and three? I was told or did you not bring the no calculator math. to the show again? Yeah, you know, I'm... Those si- the six game weeks are okay for him, but that seventh game. Really yeah, really. Yeah, he doesn't do well with odd numbers. I'll go with four and three. <laughs> okay, we'll leave it at that, Hammy. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, five and four. No, uh, four and three. <laughs> uh, I think we go two, uh, two and one, two and two. All right, and I'm going five and two because we're sweeping the Nats, we're and then we, we the will Reds. split with the Reds. Yeah, we're we're really not sweeping the Nats, but but. You know, yeah, especially come coming through. in on a five game losing streak. I don't see them losing eight in a row. I just, I don't see that happening. But, but whatever. couldn't you see, couldn't you see the sweep of the Nats and the story of the we're in their heads gets resurrected? And it would just, I can see it happening. And then we I get, would love for them. Then we get swept by the Reds. Well, exactly. Yeah, but it would be a moral victory. <laughs> <laughs> Which, which I fear will be some of the things we're hanging our hats on this season. All right, folks, that is the show. Make sure you have us in your RSS feeds or subscriptions on iTunes or Stitcher so that you don't miss any of our weekly shows. And as always, check us out at AtlantaBaseballTalk.com for past shows, to check out our blogs, and to post in our comments section. And be sure to follow us on Twitter at ATL Baseball Talk and to like us on Facebook. Thanks again for listening, everyone, and go Braves! Thanks for listening to Atlanta Baseball Talk, your weekly podcast for all things Atlanta Braves. To find new shows, to post in our forum, or to send a comment, please visit us at atlantabaseballtalk.com.